Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trufin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentech. Patch 8.1 has just been released and it's kind of buggy, but there should be a hotfix on the way and probably by the time that this video is released, it's already there and everything is fixed. But regardless, I'm recording before that hold fix so this might be a bit weird but today we're going to be talking about a very fancy square tail deck because in this video i'm going to prove to you definitively that harmony still works and we can all use some of that these days can't we so if you didn't get that from the intro, we're going with a Harmony deck. So if you're not familiar with Harmony, Harmony is the ability in Squiretel that a unit gets boosted by one whenever a unit that is of a different category is played on the field. So for example, if you have a Dwarf with, that's maybe a bad example, if you have a Dryad with Harmony on your field and you play a Dwarf which wasn't yet on the field, that Dryad will boost itself by one, herself by one. So that's basically the concept of Harmony. Um, there is a specific leader ability tied to Harmony and it's called Call of Harmony, which allows you to spawn and play Dana Mayad, or I think you should pronounce that Dana if I'm not mistaken. But she is a six power unit which has um, Harmony, but uh, which is very interesting, she has a unique category for Squiretail. So she's the only relic in Squiretail, so always guaranteeing you uh, triggering all the harmony units on your board. So that's our leading ability, very good uh, burst points if you need it. Uh, and then we're going to go through the cards in this deck one by one, of course focusing on the harmony ability. So first up we have a single dwarven skirmisher allowing you to just hit an enemy unit by three and if that unit survives you boost yourself by two, so an easy 6-4-4. Four, four. That is also a dwarf, one of the few dwarves in this deck. Then we have a dryad's caress just to have a purify in case you need it, but that's all the low provision cards. A double trained hawk, trained hawk has harmony, is a beast and can either damage a unit by two or uh, move an enemy unit to their other row. So giving you the flexibility and of course a unique category in uh, the deck here. And we have the Dryad Ranger, again Harmony, but uh, we also included a bit of a poison package in this deck. So you damage a unit by one and give it poison. So we're gonna try and destroy those high powered units with the few poison options that we have in this deck. Next up is of course the new Cat Witches because the latest expansion basically added another category to Squiretel. Because Squiretel did not have any faction specific um, Witches, so now we do have those and they still are very powerful. So uh, every end, at the end of every one of your turn they move to the other row and damage a random opponent on the opposite row by one. And if you have only four cards left in your hand that damage is increased to two instead. So again, unique category, likewise for the Dwarven Chariot, um, is a machine, which is I think unique in Squiretel. It's the only card with a machine tag. It's only one of them, so you can swap them around if you feel like you want another one of those. Um, but on deploy, they also spawn around the Dwarves. So keep that in mind that if you uh, don't have Dwarves on the field yet and you spawn play the Dwarven Chariot, you will also gain a Dwarf, but you won't be able to trigger Harmony on that Dwarf or on the Dwarven category any longer. Then Poison Whisperer, another Dryad that allows you to provide a uh, Poison, uh, which is the third option. There's also a fourth option, we'll be talking about that in a second, but basically just allowing you to have another Poison option here. No Harmony there, but it's basically um, either Forest Whisperer or maybe you could also go for the Devil's Puff Ball, which is a special card which gives you a bit of removal on top of the poison, but you need to kill with that, so this is the safer option. Then, the Double Nature's Rebuke to have some removal options, and it's uh, it also allows you to boost a random 3 and by 2 if you manage to kill something with that 5 damage. It's also necessary for one of the other cards in this deck, but we'll talk about that in, about that in a minute. So then we have the Half-Elf Hunter, who also has Harmony and spawns an Elven Deadeye next to him when you play him. So um, the Half-Elf Hunter has Harmony, but the Deadeye will not have Harmony. Both of them are Elves, so that category is spoken for then. Then of course the Carryover Hero of the Human well, category in this uh, in this faction, the Hawker Smuggler. If you play him on the melee row, it will boost a random unit in your hand by one every turn. Um, it's a human, it's the only card in this deck that has the human tag, which again just strengthens that harmony archetype. Dunka basically does the same thing, 
um, but allows you to also uh, damage unit by three if you stop if you want to stop using your order um, your passive ability. Uh, but it's a dryad instead, so no human there. Then we have Percival Schuttenbach, of course, can't be uh, omitted in a Harmony deck. So the only card in the game that has Harmony 2. So whenever you trigger his Harmony, he will go up by two points instead of one. And he also is a gnome, another unique category in this deck. Um, then we have the Weeping Willow, our first tree ant. Also has Harmony and allows you to uh, apply one more poison to an enemy unit. So we have four options to poison in this deck, which should be enough if you play your cards right to maybe do this twice but at least do this once on a big uh, target uh, but if you want to if you don't have any use for his poison ability you can also just give him a shield which just protects those harmony points that he will gain afterwards then Falv is a good tutor for nature cards there's plenty of those in this deck so keep that in mind then Peruviel is another elf um, which gives you the flexibility to either um, damage enemy units at both ends of a row by two so giving you four damage so nine points for eight or if you play her on the ranged row you damage all units on an enemy row by one so basically a weakened lesser rate but you have the choice so just go for what gives you the most points at that point you just need to calculate that out a bit and it's another elf so that's going to be handy to play out and that actually couples really nicely with Isengrim's Council. so you look at a random dwarf a dryad and elf from your deck and play one and boost it by two there's plenty of Dryads in this deck, so mostly you're not going to go for that. But on the Dwarven side, we either have that Skirmisher from down below, but if you've played that already or you have that in your hand, you're guaranteed to play Figgis Merluzo at 7 power and uh, another uh, Rowdy Dwarf. So he's a, a very strong defender at that point, allowing you to lock down one of the rows to defend your Harmony units. Um, and otherwise, Isn't Grim's Council for the Elves is also very useful because the only Bronze Elf is the Half Elf Hunter in this deck and the other two are Gold, so Teruviel or of course Eleas, which is a very, very powerful card. Uh, six power, but allows you to destroy an allied unit and spawn two of those three-point Elven Deadeyes in place of those units. So could possibly be, I think that's 11 points. Yeah, if you manage to destroy a one power unit, usually it's going to be two. So um, that's going to be 10 points for you in one go. Then Sison Tessis is the immunity dragon. So one of the only units in the game that still has immunity. Uh, so can't be targeted, has the unique uh, dragon category in this deck and also has eight power as a base, which is really, really powerful. And then the forest protector, as I said before, those Nature's Rebukes uh, gel very well with another card, which is this big boy. Uh, the first Protector allows you to deploy, uh, well, replay a Bronze Nature card from your graveyard. And 9 times out of 10, that should be a Nature's Rebuke. And then probably the strongest card in this deck is the Water of Broccolon. You can spawn this with Fauve, and I would uh, yeah, recommend that. Because you spawn two Dryad Fletchlings on a row immediately with this. Both of those start at 4 power are triads and have harmony. So if you play this and then immediately trigger your leader ability, you have 10 points in one go on this special card alone. But if you hold off and then play Percival first and then play your leader ability, those points will skyrocket. But enough about that, let's go into an example match so I can show you that in fact, harmony still works. All right, and we're going into Nilfgaard and Slave. Yeah, this is a Nilfgaard heavy meta, so... Yeah, let's try to see. So we already got Waters of Brooklyn, we got Isengrim's uh, Council, we got a double... Yeah, we don't need the doubles here, so this is going to be a rather easy mulligan. So let's do this, yeah. Seems pretty good, actually. Um, the Smuggler is going to be, of course, locked. But other than that, the starting hand is not that bad. Maybe I should even try and bait out the lock or the enslave. What's the enslave count here? Five. An enslave count of five. Hmm. So usually you want to start with a harmony unit. So in this case, there's not much uh, we can really do. So let's just hit the um, Venendal Elite with the two damage from the Hawk. We're just gonna wait it, wait this out, yeah. So then we get amnesty. So that's gonna seize our hawk, but that's basically it. So we could go with the hawker smuggler now, but it's 
basically a waste of cards right now. I'm gonna try to just play low provision bronzes. Because I'm not gonna win this first round anyway with the locking that's ready and then the, um, the, the enslave that could also be triggered. So let's grab the, um, the Cat Witcher. I don't really need that. So let's put the Cat Witcher over there. He's probably gonna get locked. Or we get a Tourney Joust. That's of course all the tactics we're gonna get. Everything that we play is gonna be removed. Okay, then I'm gonna use the Nature's Rebuke on the Hawk. And just play it as passively as they are. Because again, if you play against Nilfgaard, the best way to play is just not to play. And then we get Imperial Brigade. Obviously. The Hawker Smuggler, I mean, it is gonna die anyway. And they're just playing out the low provision stuff. Yeah, we could just play it. We can still get over this. Which is not a problem at all. It's just the next card that we're going to have to be careful about. Yeah, so that was obviously going to happen. And then the next card is going to be the Artfane Torches. So they're just playing for points now. So now I could play Teruviel. Teruviel would be 9. But that only gets us to 10. Well, the other way around, but... Hmm... Is there anything juicy we can do with Isengrim's Cancel? We could pull something from juicy from the deck with Isengrim's Cancel, but I think I'm just going to pass. This is a, a really bad matchup for me. Because the Enslave can just take everything, take anything they want. Okay, so with this, we're getting basically all our poisons. Um, there's only one poison that we're not getting. I should probably keep the Beast... The Hawk in hand. Um, let's get the Whisperer out of the way. We got the Tree Unprotected, which is good because we already played the Nature's Rebuke. Um, this is actually a pretty good hand. Uh, so I am going to go for this. And we got the Fire Scorpion. So that is pretty aggressive. Um, I'm going to... Because the Fire Scorpion actually has been buffed... Uh, the, a, a, a while ago so that five points is uh, those five points are really painful but uh, let's use the forest protector to replay that nature's rebuke and do that just now gives us a nice uh, seven point unit there and our opponent is probably gonna pause yeah okay i kind of overplayed there but it's not that much of a problem um just gonna have to be careful later on that we get another Nature's Rebuke. Um, I could try. No, there's too many Dryads still in the in the in yeah in the deck. To use this in Grim's Council, I get dunk out, but that's uh, not gonna help. So let's just pause. Yeah, that was a bit too aggressive. I think they kind of baited me really nicely there. Um, so now this is where things get a little more interesting. I'm gonna get rid of the Skirmisher, we get Dunka then. We have two Poisoners and Isengrim's Council. Um, Isengrim's Council is not guaranteed to pull something good. So might as well get rid of it, but the problem is what can I get out of this? It's actually not that bad, I think I'm gonna keep it like this. Yeah, let's keep it like this. Uh, we go first. So, in the final round, your best first play is, of course, going to be the Waters of Brokelon. If you don't have it in your hand, you can play it with Falv. If you don't have her, then, yeah, you're just screwed, I suppose. I'm not playing Dana just yet. Yes, I'm calling her Dana. Um, because I think we can pull this out with um, by playing Percival first. So, now we're going to play Percival... And then play Dana. So then we trigger all the harmonies in the correct order. And we get three six power units in the back row. Now, they could definitely still grab this with Enslave. But there's a few harmony. Ooh, that is... Yeah. Should have thought about that. That was a really nice one. That was a really nice one. Um... But the Enslave is out of the way now. 
I could use Dunka, but Dunka is not going to be that helpful here, I think. Um, do I just poison the Fire Scorpion? Is there going to be anything bigger? Oh, there's, there is going to... Hefty Helge is still, is still coming, so I should probably just play figures now. So he's at least... Percival is at least protected just a little bit. Because there's still... Um, I think one assassination and one... I should probably check. Yeah, there's the assassination. So that's gonna kill um, Figgis. That was to be expected. Um, I think there was... There was... There's still another assassination there than probably, yeah. Or at least in theory. Is this supposed to be... No, this is no longer ranged locked as it was... It used to be. We should probably just poison it, right? Yeah, because those are the next few harmony units I want to play. So let's poison the Fire Scorpion. I could take out Hefty Helge as well if I want to. And that's of course seizing it again. My three power units are going out of style. I'm guessing there's still going to be an assassination there. So now I need to poison the Fire Scorpion again to take it out. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So that gives us another um, Harmony trigger, because the fact that they're actually taking our unique tags away means that we can trigger Harmony on the next Triad as well. And we get the War Council, so they can choose from their top three cards. I don't know what that's going to be. There's plenty of tactics there. The problem with Percival, our, our board right now, is there's one very high-powered unit on the field that is no longer protected. Um, and now we get the Venendal Elite. Okay. I think... Yeah, so next up, we still have one more Harmony unit in our hand, so might as well play it. Um, let's play that over there. And hit the Venendal Elite. This does not look good, to be honest. Problem is that Percival has all our points right now. So if they manage to take out Percival, we're down 5 points and we get Coup de Grasse, which takes out the the Hawk. Actually also triggers the Harmony of um, the Dryad they already had, the Ranger. And then we get that. And again our front row is unprotected, but yeah, no point in dilly-dallying anymore, so let's put... Dunka down there now. So again, we trigger Harmony now again, even though we already played the Dryad Ranger. Okay. Interesting. So that's just putting that on top of my deck, which means that technically I could still pull that now. <laughs> um, I'm not going to because Elias is better in this case. But that was really funny because be because they put that back on my deck, I got another Dunka over here. That was actually pretty funny. So let's put Elias. Elias is now 8 points. Destroy the Dwarf. And we get this. The only downside is, is that I'm not going to trigger um, Harmony now on... Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, of course. But it's not the end of the world just yet. So let's play uh, Sice and Tesses now. Which gives us a 10 point lead. But of course we're still a card down. And now we still have Teruviel. Teruviel is now... It's going to be 10 points. It's going to be another 10 points and we don't trigger Harmony anymore. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. So, last but not least, Teruviel. All that front row. And that's basically it. Fingers crossed. Can they do 9 points? They could. They probably could. No, they can't. <laughs> Okay, that was actually a really weird match. But uh, there we go. Even against Enslave, Harmony still works. So as you can see, even against very strong tactical decks like the one we just faced, you can definitely win um, if you play your cards right. So the most important thing when you're playing this deck is that you have to try and um, 
Estimate if it's better to play your harmony units first, which is most of the time, so you can start building up those points from harmony later in the round. The poisons should be applied very tactically. Um, against Nilfgaard this was a bit weird because I, I went for the engine card, which was to kind of delete that tactical advantage they had with giving them minor damage ticks that they could put uh, units from my side uh, on their side, like for example with the Coup de Grasse, that could have been way worse if they still had that Fire Scorpion. Um, but otherwise you can go for the big targets of course with the Poison, um, because that's going to give you way more value than what I just did. Um, in the first round, try to get uh, Dunka and or the Hawker Smuggler down, so you get that hand boosting, even if it's just a little bit. Um, and you can definitely play a few of the Harmony units in round one, because you have a, a plenty of different categories in this deck that you can use to trigger that all the way. And then in the final round, you should go for the play that you just saw. So ideally first Waters of Broccolon, then if you still have Percival, Percival on top of that, and play your leader ability immediately afterwards. Because that is going to give you a lot of point potential in one go. Again, that leader ability, Dana, is a unique category. She is a relic, so you're not going to get that anywhere else. So you should play that um, whenever you can. She also has Harmony, so you don't lose points if you want to play her earlier or later, but it's just a second way to get, um, especially first of all, to six power and two armor instead of that, a bit weaker four power and two armor. Um, other than that, use your tutors smart. You know what you have in your deck, so especially for Isn't Grimm's Cancel, that can be very, very beneficial as you just saw in that last uh, match as well. We got Elias out. Um, was not guaranteed at that point, but it was good that we had that option. Elias at eight points and then those um, four extra points from the Dead Eyes, which basically won us the match. And that's it for today's episode of Gwent Edge, the Harmony Still Works deck. I hope I've proven this to you, that you can still use Harmony very, very effectively, as I'll be using this to get back into pro rank this season as well. And you don't need any order abilities, so even if that bug still persists, um, this deck is perfect if you want to continue uh, ranking up in the ladder. And it's it's something else as well, it's not something you see a lot in the meta, but I've, I've been winning against, um, like Nilfgaard, as you just saw, I've been winning against monster decks. Um, it's it's really, really good in a lot of circumstances, especially with that poison package included. So uh, let me know what you think. If you have any advice on improving this deck, also definitely let me know in the comment section where we can discuss this further, because that's what we're here for after all, helping each other out. So thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye, stay nutty.